on? Is it on? Can you hear me? Welcome to Team Wool Sheep Reviews. And what have we got today? We have the Skywalker XX. Oh yes. See you soon. Welcome to Team Woolly Sheep Reviews and what am I up to today? I'm in the shed and I have this big bird. What is this big bird? This bird is the Skywalker X6. It's been out a few years. It's quite a popular model. It's a wing in case you didn't guess. It's a bit like Christmas when you realize there's an awful lot of bits. Oh no! No instructions. Comes with link connectors to go in the wings. So go in these pieces and they plug in with in plugs. No, 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 no. Absolutely bonkers. God, is that wind with the flexing on the wing? No, 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 no. Done. I've got a 600 milliwatt immersion RC uh, video transmitter and I've brought the cables through but as you can see I've used a sizable cable and I've used a 3S sorry a 2S balance plug so when I if I take the wing off I can actually uh, do it. I was going to use the, um, the little plugs that you'd have to go in the back of the camera but I keep finding they work loose the connections a bit crap so I've gone with this. So this will take me up then to the OS suite. And obviously that's the servo. And this is the power. And what I've done for the power, to go in the, uh, in the plane itself, this is a, 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 an LC filter, which I've soldered and shrink wrapped. And a ferrite core um, to take some of the eddies out. So, that's basically it. So you can see these are clip on ones. Quite handy, do the job perfect. So that will sit just inside next to the wing. So the filter, so it's filtered just before it goes out onto the wing. It's a big heavy model. It's 1500 wingspan. It's got spaces in the wings for your receivers and video transmitter. It's got masses of space inside. Plenty of space for your your tech at the moment I've just got a Beck speed controller and a few filters and what's not so yeah this is this is uh, coming together quite nicely I shall give you a, a more detailed tour why not there's a few changes first change is the kit came with these serial connections now I don't know whether they're like computer connections yeah, so the serial ports, no, 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 I don't like the idea of that. There's a lot of potential breakdown. Um, servo horns, I'm sure these are fine. 
However, they're not my cup of tea either. So I put proper servo horns on, proper couplings. So as you can see, can you see? to take shape as you can see in the uh, in with the controls I've now got the Turnergy is Aerostar it's a flight stabilization system no autonomous features so there's no return to launch or anything it's just gonna give me stabilization and hopefully uh, auto leveling so if I'm using the head tracker I can look have a look, have a good look around with it nice and level so and as you can see there's a 20 amp Beck unit which is going to supply 5 volts to my servos and my uh, OSD system so there should be no trouble with overloading that. The servos that I've used are the Park Flyer size so they're slightly bigger than what uh, most of my planes use so but they got uh, quite a lot of power so there's no issues there and as you can see I've changed the push rods so I've got carbon fiber push rod with the Hobby King aluminium clevises so control shouldn't be an issue I didn't use the the gluing ones they're actually screwed and bolted so there's no risk of that as you can see the antenna for the easy UHF I'll flip the plane over so we can see underneath and obviously on this side is the VTX so they're well spaced on the underside is the immersion RC so no expense bed and obviously the cables are all in the channel on the receiver side obviously it's an 8 channel easy UHF and all the connections I had to open up the channels to get all the cables in obviously I've used the 22 AWG sized uh, servo cables so they're a bit fatter and so I've had to open the channels up to get all the cables in and I put a lost model alarm there which I can enable off the transmitter so I will set that as a, a fail safe so that that is enabled so you see it's starting to take shape not sure about having all the cables there whether the losses and the risk of all the connections are greater than having a coaxial cable just going to an antenna, antenna on the end don't know but there's it's not likely to get any uh, interference from anything else being out there and so it's kind of looking quite cool these um, obviously the wing retaining clips and a screw on the front to keep the wings coming off so uh, I don't plan to be taking the wings off and uh, right one thing I got to mention center of gravity you're flying a wing center of gravity is crucial now all the instructions are showing that the center of gravity is in this central point there I did read on one of the uh, forums that it was to be 440 mil back but I got a feeling there's a that was the X8 and not the X6 and that would have taken it to there so that is where the center of gravity point is so I'm gonna mark it up and I'm gonna put some uh, screw heads there so that I can feel the dimples when I'm checking it and testing it I can find out but what I might do is get it on that position slightly nose heavy and that should be good i've got a sizable motor on the back so there's no issues with with power but what i don't want is a tail heavy plane because that's not going to help anything so yeah it's starting to take shape now so it's uh, it's all set up i've got it enabled on my transmitter so all the features are, are ready to go and i'm getting quite excited about uh, test flying it so just to point something else out is after I had set up the plane and all the, the pieces in, I checked the actual balance actually on its horizontal plane. And I found that it was slightly heavier on this side, probably because of the weight of the VTX and the antenna compared to the receiver. So I had to add a small weight under that tape there. 
so that's in there to give me that lateral balance so yeah so I've taken all the boxes so far and tried to do this belt and braces put a bit of uh, fiber tape up there because obviously that's gonna be scraping along the floor I put some wing skids in there so when it comes down it will uh, slow the landing as they sort of bite in right looking at the front bay you'll see the connections here I've got power coming in battery connection I got five volts this is going to be and in there somewhere oh here is is my video uh, feed so obviously that would be go to the video transmitter uh, as a camera needs to go on the end of that but I'm going to use the OSD so this is going to plug into my OSD there which is going to live there this is going to give me all my telemetry data onto the video screen this this pair is channel seven and eight which is going to be my pan and tilt so I'm going to have head tracking I haven't decided exactly where it's going to go a lot of people are mounting them on the lid the only thing is, I'd like to have the camera and everything mounted to be able to take the lid off, throw it to one side to change the battery without having all these cables to deal with and the risk of the camera getting damaged and so on. So I'm quite keen to actually mount it just on this front edge here on a pan and tilt system. But there's not much nose. I did consider putting it there, but I'm going to lose a lot of visibility from this big nose section. So, um still undecided I'm gonna do some tests with a camera and just place it in the different locations to see how it performs so that's where we're at so pan and tilt camera system on the front I'm not going to put the um, the system in just yet because what I need to do is do some tests I want to test fly it before I start putting FPV on it and the OSD I'm going to use the Aeromax OSD is from um, virtual pilot absolutely superb it'll have a gps uh, pack and in which case the gps pack will go on top there and so i'll get a full osd with location and direction home no return to launch or return to home features but it will point me where to go to get home with the uzi uhf then i'm not gonna be too going too far because i got 5.8 gigahertz video so my range is limited so it's just to have fun flying around and at least know where home is when you get up there everything looks the same so uh, instead of getting lost that's what i'm gonna do so yes so my return to home will be these so i can't wait so plenty of room for the batteries that's a four amp 3s battery in there which i've been messing with uh with the center of gravity with the size of the motor and everything else i think i can get two of them in there so I got plenty of capacity for battery, so I could get an hour or two flight out of this, depending on uh, on my performance from the motor and the propeller. But hey, what the hell? I've got a 1250 kV. It's a 3642 motor. It's the Aero Drive from Turnergy, and these motors a little bit more, but they are better quality. So hopefully I'll get some good performance out of that. I'm planning to run a 10 by 6 prop, but with a 3S battery. So this is going to be a 3S setup. It's what I've got. I'm not buying 4S batteries just for this. I fly a lot with uh, 3S. So yeah, it's getting uh, get to the point now where I need a nice day so I can fly. Rain, rain. And more rain. <laughs> 